actually combine, it can be a relationship with your customer. Let's talk about it later. <coughs> so if we go from redesign to design in the new, what are the things that should be, should be the colors on our palette? I suggest that there are three things that we have to deeply understand. One is platforms, the second is algorithms, and the third one is contextuality. And here, of course, I don't see platforms when we talk about the future work, not the past work, but the future work. I don't see platforms as firms. I see them as commons. And when you design for commons, then you can also reach the network effects that are going to be so important in the, in the future. So also, uh, taking this further, you could say that what, what assets were for the industrial firm, network effects are for the post-industrial firms, platforms, commons. And in a way, the platform model is only the latest iteration of the firm concept, but it's also the first concept of the network society ahead of us. So understanding-wise, the, the shift is from transaction cost economics to networks and network phenomena, which we still don't quite see the way they should be understood. And that means that there's also a possibility to come up from the industrial society mass solutions and not scaling just uh, what we do mass solution-wise, but scaling to scale and scope and having those two at the same time. Let's go to the second point, algorithms. And of course, here, as I suggested, we are in the midst of the biggest democratization of productive capacity that human beings have ever encountered. So understanding the democracy behind what's going on, or the possibility for democracy that's, that's happening at the moment, is the key design principle. And of course, as, as discussed, we see that we are losing jobs to automation, but I don't see automation as a part of the, from, of the digital post-industrial society. I see automation as the last of the industrial era. It's the last phase. The first phase of the post-industrial era is augmentation of human capabilities and human competitive and cognitive abilities. And of course, what helps us tremendously here is, is what's happening on, on, the, on the digital developments at the moment, digital advances. And, and of course, everybody knows what's going on, what comes to natural language interfaces and agent-based systems. What, what this entails as a design principle that I don't, I'm not sure whether making apps is going to be the thing next year. So apps may be just one step towards what is often, often calls, called uh, con uh, co uh, conversational commerce. What, uh, what is interesting is, is whether you guys could actually think bigger and, and ask yourselves whether these new systems, blockchain-based systems, could be actually changing our go governmental structures and the politics. This is something that we try to do in the Nordic countries, and, and of course, this is uh, also related to basic income uh, ex uh, experiments that we are at the moment starting in Finland. But the, the most important thing for me personally is the understanding of contextuality and the importance of, of time and space. And why I'm claiming it is because I say that there are many problems without mass solutions. And also, as a design principle, I claim that post-industrial work starts with context-specific interaction. So it doesn't start from an idea that goes to a product. It starts from a conversation that goes towards a solution. And this is why the conversation approaches are so important today, technology-wise. And of course, here you could also say that the industrial work created products, and the idea that actually uh, Peter Drucker first said 
that post industrial work creates customers. So instead of, of, as a design principle, talking about creating products, you should talk about creating customers. But what we, as researchers, what we ask often is that what could be the total opposite of industrialism? What could be the polar opposite? And, and we claim that it's something that is happening in a unique time and place, like here and now. So the moments here and now are the most important ones. And, and also what we study, we are not sure how this goes, but, but this is very interesting for us at least, is to think about processes as the things that you pay. You don't pay for products, you pay for processes as a customer. And why we claim this, we say that actually work is solving problems. And when we use the word problems, we don't use it in a negative sense. Because if you want to, to, feel, to feel positive or be positive, you could say that, okay, work is, is in a way working with opportunities. But we definitely want to say that work is solving problems. And I come, come back to that. Because then it means that, that the post-industrial approach to work might be defining the problem together with the customer, solving the problem together with the customer, you remember the process approach, and then perhaps scaling up the solution in the network. Also, you could say that learning is asking questions. Now, as a design principle, each one of each one in this room should ask yourself, what kind of problems do you solve? And also, what kind of questions do you ask? And this then brings me back to the approach or the question of caring. Do you care and what do you care about? In, in many ways, it is a wonderful time Despite all the problems we have, the, the huge global problems, it's a, it's a wonderful time to do these things in business. Because the industrial era was about reducing choices, but the post-industrial era is about expanding choices, expanding our thinking, coming up with totally new approaches, which nobody can say, no, you can't do that, because of the democratic approach to technology and capability. So, Opening up the, the world, I would say that when we design the new work, when we, when we try to create the narrative for post-industrial work, there are three things that you should be alert to and aware of. Three things should, that should be on your radar screen. And those are the platform economy, the algorithmic economy, and the interactive economy. If you want to follow the developments, please do follow us on, 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 on Twitter or, or follow the work. We do a lot of research on these very topics. And please do join us. Thank you so much. <laughs>